Thank you, Dalton family. Appreciate that so much. Well, it's Mother's Day, is it not? It's Mother's Day. Yes, it is Mother's Day. If you haven't bought your mother a gift yet, shame on you, but there is still time. And don't do it right now, but you can use your phone later on after I'm done preaching after church and, and buy your mom something for Mother's Day. And uh, so they say this about mothers. Yeah, of course, uh, there's so much we could say about moms today, right? So much we could say about mothers. Uh, moms, they've really been with us since day number one. I feel like they, they've been carrying me my whole life. Moms, you got to love them. A few years back, I thanked my mom uh, for giving birth to me. I did. I, I thanked her, and she hit me. She's over there. And uh, I'm, thanks, Mom. I wouldn't be here today without you. Someone said it this way. At four years of age, my mommy can do anything. At eight years of age, my mom knows a whole lot. At 12 years of age, my mom doesn't really quite know everything. At 14, of course, mother doesn't know that either. At 16, Mom, well, she's so uncool. 18, that person? 25, well, she might know a little bit about it. 35, before we decide, ask mom. 45, I wonder what she would have thought about that. And 65, wish I could talk with my mom again. Moms, you got to love them. I, I, I found this, though, things mothers never say. Can I share these this morning? Right, we can be sappy, and I can be sappy sometimes, but I also like a good joke. Those of you who know me well know I'm, I'm happy to laugh a little bit at church. It's okay to laugh in church. Things mothers never say. How on earth can you see the TV sitting so far back? <laughs> Just leave the lights on. It makes the house look more cheery. <laughs> Let me smell that shirt. Oh, it's good for another week. <laughs> Things you'll never hear mothers say. <laughs> I have a story about this one, but here it is. Go ahead and keep that straight, dog, honey. I'll be glad to feed and walk that every day. <laughs> Growing up, my sister and I had a straight dog for all of, I think, one afternoon. One afternoon. Wish my mother had read this then. Things you hear mothers never say. Well, if Timmy and mom say it's okay, it's fine with me. <laughs> and two more things you never hear mothers say. I don't have a tissue with me in my purse. Just use your sleeve. <laughs> and last but not least, things you'll never hear mothers say. Don't bother wearing a jacket. The cold air does not actually cause you to get sick. <laughs> That's a whole other sermon all by itself. The moms got real cold here. Wait a second. It, it, it does cause that. Well, I'm glad, of course, glad for mom. Moms are special. Moms are unique. We love our moms, do we not? We love them. They're wonderful. And this morning, I want to direct your attention to a mom in the Bible. Can we do that? Look at a mom and a little story about this mom and some struggles she went through, what God did, and then something significant about that. If you have your Bibles, if you'd open to the first book of Samuel, chapter number one. We're going to learn this morning about a lady by the name of Hannah, we have some Hannahs here, but Hannah in the Bible, the mother of Samuel the prophet. Now Samuel was a significant prophet in Scripture. Samuel not only ruled Israel, but also was a prophet. He was a judge and a prophet. He was not a king, just so you know, there's only one person who can be prophet, the priest and the king. His name is Jesus Christ. But Samuel was a significant figure in the Old Testament and in the Israel history. In fact, Samuel anointed by oil the first king, Saul, and the second king, King David. Samuel, when he's just a young man at the age of 12 or so, will hear God speaking to him, and then God will reveal some very hefty truth to Samuel as a prophet. He'll tell him how the priest Eli has not obeyed and followed God in regards to his sons and as a parent, and that God's going to change uh, kind of the line there and, and put it on Samuel. Samuel's a very significant figure and, and did a lot of things for the Lord. The Lord used him in, in powerful and mighty ways, in mighty ways. But before you get to Samuel, you get to learn about his mom. The Bible doesn't give us all of the mom stories. 
I'm sure if it did, there would not be enough pages in Scripture to hear about these stories, the sacrifices the moms made and the ways they worked. But the, the Bible gives us some, and this is one such account as we learn about Hannah, a special mom. We're going to look through a few things this morning, but I want to give you one thought. I'll give it to you now, then I'll come back to it at the end. The thought is this this morning. The influence of a mother is eternal in value. The influence of a mother is eternal in value. You know that we can be thankful for the moms, our moms. Thankful for the influence that they have or had in our lives. Some of you have, I'm sure, same, uh, some characteristics, some tendencies that your mom, I've heard the story about the lady who got married and every time she made a roast, she cut off the ends, put it in the oven and cooked it. One day her husband said, honey, you've done this since we've been married. Why do you cut off the ends? She goes, well, that's the way my mom always did it. It doesn't make any sense. So she was kind of bothered by it. So she called her mom and said, mom, you know, my husband was asking me why I cut off the ends and I, that's how you always did it. Why you cut off the ends? of every roast that you make in the oven. And the mom said, well, makes sense, honey. My pan was never big enough. <laughs> I'm sure we all have characteristics and tendencies and habits and, and good and maybe some not so good sometimes, but, but from our mother, the influence of a mother. But here we see that the influence of a mother is eternal in value. I want to begin in 1 Samuel. In 1 Samuel, if we can look in chapter number 1, Verse 28, and we'll go back in the chapter. Verse 28 is kind of our key text for this morning where Hannah, the mother, says this, Therefore also I have lent him, that is Samuel, to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord, and he, that is Samuel, worshiped the Lord there. Lord, I thank you for this time and for this passage of Scripture. Lord, thank you for the folks who are here this morning. Lord, I pray you direct our steps, direct my thoughts this morning as I speak. Lord, may I, may I turn our attention towards you and would you touch us this morning? Lord, I pray for those who are here that our hearts would be touched by your word and your spirit. Lord, would you encourage us, would you strengthen us? In Jesus' name I ask, amen. Samuel... We learn just a few things about this wonderful mother by the name of Hannah. In fact, we'll find her mentioned just in chapter 1 and chapter 2. Opens up in chapter 1 and closes down in chapter 2. And then basically in, a, in our view, in our scriptures, Hannah, the mom, is now off the scene. But the significance, the influence that she had carried on long past the little snippet, the little snapshot that we get to see from Scripture. We introduced her in chapter 1, in uh, verse number 2. We've learned about the, the dad, but verse number 2, the Bible says, and he had two wives. Now, Pastor Let spoke here for many years, 44 years, and he always said when he came to this particular passage, two wives, he'd say, and that is one too many. This man had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Paniah. And Paniah had children, but Hannah had no children. We're introduced to this lady, Hannah, and she has a problem. And the problem was significant. The problem was significant. The problem was that, that in that particular culture, sometimes a lot of pressure was placed on the ladies to, to have children and to have Male children, like we can do anything about that. Like we get to choose the gender of our children, like we can do that. But a lot of pressure, but this would be now and then a significant problem. A problem that is not easily solved, even in today's modern medicine, not easily solved. A significant problem that was externally provoked. This other lady was kept on egging her on. Listen, I have children, you don't. I'm better than you. You're nothing. And, and Hannah's plagued by this. She's internally plagued by this, so much so that she wouldn't eat. She's bothered by this problem. I've known many ladies who have been bothered by problems in life. You see, ladies and moms, they carry problems a little bit differently than us men. Don't they? 
Men, we can sleep well usually when the ladies can't always sleep. What's wrong? My mind's racing. We'll just go to sleep. And they care. And of course, when a child is injured, who do they normally go to? Normally go to mom. Why? Because mom normally carries that problem, does she not? Oh, I'm so sorry. Let me see that. Let me kiss it and make it better. Oh, honey, you're all, oh, you'll be fine. All right, well, what does dad say? Well, he pulls out a dad joke, right? Let me get my chainsaw. You'll be fine. Brush it off. If I had a dollar for everything I brushed off growing up, you know, dad, here's my leg. Brush it off. Okay, dad, got it. It's clean now. What do we do with it? Reattach it, perhaps? Ladies and Hannah here carried this problem, but it was a significant problem. She was bothered so much that the Bible tells us in verse uh, um, number, uh, number five and six, or four, five, and six, that she wouldn't even eat. Her husband tried to solve the problem. Amen. Oh, it's a side lesson for us in here. All right, just for men, just a minute, men, all right? She's plagued, Hannah's plagued by this problem, and, and he says, what's wrong? And she goes, I don't have any children. He goes, am I not better to you? We say, then 10 sons? Is that what he says, 10 sons? Look at, look at it. Am I not, where is, where is it here? He goes, am I not better to you, in verse number eight, than 10 sons? Now that is a man response. Honey, what's wrong? You've got me. What more could you want in life? You've got me. Honey, how could you possibly be disappointed? You've got me. Now, Hannah doesn't say this, but <laughs> you'd be like, well, and that's part of my problem, okay? That's part of my problem. My point is this, though. This lady, Hannah, beginning of the story, had a problem. It was significant. Ladies and men, in times in life, that we're going to have problems, significant problems. Problems that really that are outside of our control and outside of our ability to solve. Hannah did something powerful here in this, in this passage, an example for us that I want to challenge all of us, specifically mothers, in verse number 10, where the Bible says, And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord. There was a problem, but then there was a prayer. And Hannah took this prayer to the Lord and began to pray to God, began to pray that God would solve this problem, that God would hear her. In the next few verses, from verses 10 to 12, you can read about some of the words she spoke unto God about how vexed and how uh, troubled her spirit was. She began to pour out her heart to God. And my friend, our problems ought to be directed toward the one who can solve them, which is exactly what Hannah did. She began to pray. Note here, I'm so thankful for a praying mother. I mentioned here at church before, but my mom can pray. She's probably the one person I don't want praying against me. I remember in high school when she prayed in a snow day. And you say, well, that's silly, Pastor Howell. You can believe it or not. I know what I experienced. We're going to bed. My mom said, I'm going to pray for a snow day tomorrow. She did that a couple times throughout high school. At that time, I, the first one I, I remember, it was whatever, and I woke up, and it was a snow day. That's neat. By the time I was a senior, if mom was praying for a snow day, turn off your alarm. You're getting a snow day. My mom, was, my mom has a unique prayer life, and I'm so thankful for it. Hannah, here in the Bible, had a unique prayer life, a powerful prayer life. And moms, I encourage you to pray for your children, pray for your husband, pray to God. It was real. It was relentless. The Bible says she continued praying. Charles Spurgeon, the great preacher Charles Spurgeon said this, I cannot tell how much I owe to the prayers of my good mother. Charles Wesley said this, great preacher Charles Wesley, I learned more about God from my mother than from all the theologians in England. Moms, you've got influence. You've got influence. Kids, your mom have influence. 
I'm so thankful that Hannah gave us the example of prayer, but she's praying and Hannah is pouring out her soul. The, the passage goes on and, and, sh- and tells us in verse number 13, as she's praying, the Bible says, verse 13, now Hannah, verse 13, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunken. So here she is in the temple and she's pouring her heart out to God. And I see not only the problem of Hannah, I don't only see the prayer of Hannah, I see the passion of Hannah. She is so uh, passionate about this prayer. She's so uh, taken by this prayer that the priest there thinks that she's drunk. And he begins to chide her that she would come to the temple intoxicated. Now, I, 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 can't, I don't know why Eli, I guess, was more accustomed to seeing people intoxicated than praying with a passionate prayer. I hope that folks around us are used to seeing passionate prayer. Her passion was on full display here and there was some confusion for her passion. Mom, sometimes you have this confusion in compassion, in, in, this, in this passion. There'll be a mom and they'll be so happy that they'll cry. Mom, why are you crying? I'm just so happy. That's confusion. I'm not saying it's bad, but this is what's happening. There's confusion sometimes because you feel things so strongly, so strongly. And here, Hannah was feeling this passion, feeling this so strongly. There was some confusion and some condescension. Yet, yet Hannah answers the priest, and, and, he, and she said, listen, I have poured out my heart to God. I've asked God of uh, the, this request, verses 13 and, and 14 and 15. I have poured out my spirit, and I'm sorrowful of spirit. And I've poured out my soul before the Lord. This mom had a problem. She prayed, and there was passion. There is a promise to the mom that brought some hope. There's a promise here to Hannah in verse 17. Eli almost offhandedly says this, Go thy way, go in peace, and God of Israel will grant thee thy petition. I don't know, if I had been Hannah that day, I wonder what I would have said. If you had been Hannah, what would you have said? Bothered all the time. Her heart uh, plagued and provoked by this, this other lady. Her husband just, hey, you got me. Here at the temple, pouring her heart out with passion and prayer. And the priest almost, Eli almost offhandedly says, well, go in peace and God will grant thee thy request. It almost at first glance seems like he's trying to get rid of her almost. Almost. Except that Eli was speaking for the Lord. And he gave her a promise And Hannah picked up her stuff and had real hope in her life. She knew at that point that God was going to answer her prayer. And sure enough, you know what happened a little while later? Later, She had Samuel. She had Samuel. See, this lady who had a problem, who made a prayer, who brought some real passion to the prayer, got a promise. And that promise brought us Samuel. Samuel was an answer to prayer. Samuel was a direct answer to prayer. God still answers prayers today in 2021. God still hears you, mom, and as you're praying, as you're pouring your heart out, listen, God hears you. God hears your prayers, and God can still answer in a direct and specific way Your prayer requests. You may have great problems right here. Maybe even problems that no one else knows about. That no one else can maybe even comprehend. God will hear you. And God can answer those requests. But pastor, you don't know how big my problem is. You're right, I probably don't. And I probably won't even comprehend it. But God does. He'll hear you, he'll answer, and it may be the prayer like Hannah for a child. What a hard prayer request. But God has answered that before, even in this church, at First Baptist Church. God has answered that right here. Maybe the prayer for a wayward child. We've seen God answer that right here at First Baptist Church. 
It may be a different type of problem. It may be a problem for another loved one. It may be for a job. It may be a different situation. But you may have a significant prayer, a significant problem. Bring that to God, but bring it with some passion. God, I need you. You see, Hannah was at that point that no one else but God could solve the problem. No one else but God could solve it, and solve it, he did. We find out that just a little while later, God answered, God answered that request. And God brought to Hannah Samuel. We then come to our text in verse 27 and 28. For this child I prayed, the Lord hath given me my petition which I have asked. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord as long as he liveth. He shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshipped the Lord there. As I was preparing for this message and studying this message, the story I've known the story of Hannah. But I was really captivated by that last little phrase of verse 28. And he worshipped the Lord there. You know where Samuel worshipped the Lord? The same place as his mama did. The same place as his mama did. You know where Samuel served God? The, the place where Hannah had poured her heart out to God. The same place. It captivated me. It caught my attention that, yes, I knew that God had, had answered Hannah's prayer request, but to see the influence of Samuel from Hannah. You see, we turn the page to chapter 2 and we read a few things how Hannah will come and visit. She'll bring a coat as she visits Samuel. But then you turn to chapter 3 and Hannah's off the scene. You see Samuel begin to follow God and follow God and worship God and obey God and follow God and speak for God and live for God. And after chapter 2, chapter 3 begins the story of Samuel and Samuel worshipped there. The influence of a mother was eternal in value. What if Hannah hadn't been so passionate about God? What if Hannah hadn't brought Samuel to worship there? What if Hannah hadn't raised Samuel after the Lord what if Hannah hadn't been the spiritual lady she was supposed to be? You see, Hannah influenced her son. Now, Samuel followed God all by himself, but he had the influence of a mother. And not just a normal mother, she was a spiritual mom. And moms, you're going to have influence on your children. Oh, in the physical ways, the ways you maybe do their hair or you dress them or do those things together, but you'll have a spiritual influence on your children. You can give a passion for God. And I see here a passion that was given. You see, no Hannah, no Samuel. No Samuel, no truth in Israel, the way it was given. No Hannah, no worship for Samuel. No prayer, no answer to the prayer request. No problem. No prophet. You see, back here there was a problem that Hannah felt was not fair. That Hannah felt, I don't deserve this problem. But this problem ultimately brought this solution. So ladies, moms, the problem that you see right there may be all part of God's plan for you to have influence I hope today that you don't take your mom for granted. Say, how would I do that? Forget to thank her. Forget to write her a note. Forget to acknowledge the good things that she's done. The spiritual things. I hope today, moms, that you don't quit now. Don't quit now. The race isn't over yet. You can still be and influence the life of your kids. Thomas Edison said this, great inventor Thomas, Thomas Edison, I did not have my mother long, but she cast over me an influence 
that lasted all my life. The good effects of her early training I can never lose if it had not been for her appreciation and her faith. At a critical time in my life, I would never have become an inventor. I was always a careless boy, and with mother of a different mental caliber, I would have turned out badly. But her firmness, firmness, her sweetness, her goodness. To keep me in the right path, my mother was the making of me, and the memory of her will always be a blessing to me. Samuel, after a little while, went to live at the temple. And mom just came and visited. But as I read the rest of Samuel about Samuel, I see the influence of a mother stamped all over his life. Moms, thank you. Thank you for that spiritual influence. Don't throw in the towel now. The problem may be the solution. The problem may bring a tremendous blessing for others. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for moms. And Lord, the influence that they have, we see here in Samuel, how unique and special it is. Lord, I want our hearts to be turned towards you. Lord, help those who are here, perhaps there's a problem, a need, significant need that you need to solve. Lord, bring the strength and the promise of an answer to them. I wonder if you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, while you were speaking, God spoke to me. I've got a significant problem in my life. I can identify with Hannah. Maybe not that exact problem, but I've had to pour out my heart to God before. I know what that's like. Pastor, would you pray for me? As, as you spoke, God spoke to me. I'd love to see God work. And appreciate you speaking this morning. Who said, would you pay for me? pray for me, Pastor? God bless you. 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 Listen, my friend, we'll pray in just a minute, but God, God can help you. God can bring real answers to significant problems. I wonder if there's someone here who say, Pastor, I'm not sure that I've ever trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior, but I'd like to be sure. When you pray for the others, would you say a word of prayer for me? I've never trusted Jesus Christ, but I, I don't want to go on like this. I, I'd like to know how I could do that. Would you pray for me when you pray for the others? And I'll draw no more attention to you than did anyone else. Who would say, that's me, Pastor. I'm not sure I've ever trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. Would you pray for me when you pray for the others? Just slip your hand and slip back down. I'll see, acknowledge it and draw no more attention to you than did anyone else. Who said, that's me this morning, Pastor. Lord, I thank you for this time. Lord, I thank you for a godly mother. Lord, may we be reminded about the influence that they have had on us. But Lord, also may these moms be reminded about the influence that they wield when they're humble before you. Lord, there's some folks this morning who indicated by an upraised hand that there's a problem that they need you to solve. Lord, I pray that you'd strengthen them as they pour their heart out to you, that you would bring real answers to their significant problems. Lord, bless this invitation. May it please you in Jesus' name. Amen.